What is going on, Diesel Nation? We're excited to have you guys with us today on the Diesel Podcast. If you're watching this on YouTube and aren't subscribed, make sure and click the subscribe button, like, comment, let us know something about the episode. If there's a particular guest or topic that you're really interested in, let us know. We'd love to be able to take your suggestions and then get them onto future episodes. Today, I'm going to be chatting with Power Hungry Performance, and I'm really excited to chat with them for a few different reasons. One is the Hydro Chip, which a lot of our guests, you've heard them talk about tuning 7.3s, and we're going to be talking with Power Hungry Performance about how they did that, how they started, and then also something that's really cool they're working on for the industry, which is called the Summit 7.3. So it's a convention or a gathering of of companies and people who work on 7.3s to basically bring everybody together. And Power Hungry is offering a really cool promotion um, for them. If you use code TDP20 at summit73.com, you get 20% off admission. So this is just, this is designed for people who work in the industry, build parts for it. There's going to be a ton of tool companies. I've been hearing a lot of shop owners talk about this. So we're going to go into the details of that today. And if you haven't signed up, definitely make sure you do. Use TDP20 get to get 20% off general admission. It's going to be a great time. Also, before we get to the podcast, I want to remind you, our friends over at Kershaw Knives have a 40% off MSRP code for you. If you go to kershaw.kaiusa.com, use code 2024diesel40. There's a ton of choices for different knives for EDC, hunting, fishing, around the job site, around the house. Also a bunch of choices for um, blade steel, blade shape, different opening mechanisms, and a whole host of knives designed to meet any budget. So if you're in the market, definitely make sure head on over, check them out. Use code 2024-DIESEL40 for 40% off MSRP. All right, let's get to today's podcast with Power Hungry Performance, talking about the Hydro Chip Tuning 7.3s and also the Summit 7.3 that they're putting on for people that are in the industry. Bill and Angela, welcome to the Diesel Podcast. I'm really excited to be able to chat with you guys. We have known about your company for years. Um, we've had uh, a lot of people on that have asked about 7.3 upgrades, different things that could be done. So I'm really excited to chat with you guys today, learn more about PHP, also some of your products, and then the 7.3 Summit, which I've been hearing a lot of shop owners chat about. So I'm sure it'll be a good time. Yeah, well, thanks for having us, Patrick. We're really excited to be here and uh, um, you know, hear a lot of good things about the podcast and, and we're just, just very happy to be here. It's uh, It's always really cool to be able to chat with a company you guys are very well established you've been around diesel for a really long time and i always am curious about how the company started how it came to be um, where the passion started for say seven threes or power stars just diesel trucks in general so i wanted to ask you bill about that how did how did uh, php come to be um actually i've actually been in the industry for 25 years i started in 97 with super chips um they hired me to be their ford tuner and, and at, at the beginning of it it was a lot of mustangs and f-150s and stuff and then they started getting into the 7.3 market. So we we're still doing OBS trucks. Um, wrote the very first tunes out there for the 7.3. And uh, worked for Superchips for a few years. Um, left, left Superchips, started my own company just doing custom tuning. And um, was doing pretty well with that. Uh, moved to North Carolina. Uh, ran my company up there for a few years. Started building a name for custom tuning. And Edge Products had heard about me through some of our dealers, and they were just coming out with the Evolution. Uh, they had nobody that knew how to tune Fords. They were having a lot of shifting issues with the Super Duty stuff. So in 2004, they bought my company at the time, which was Diesel Power, um, and hired me to work for them. So I went to work for them for a few years, uh, did all the Evolution tuning for them, their, uh, all their 7.3 tuning, the 6-liter tuning. And even started doing some of the 6.4 tuning before I left. Um, I just couldn't deal with the climate in Utah. It's too cold. It's too dry. <laughs> and uh, just uh, from, a, from a boy from Miami, it's just, it's not where I wanted to live. So um, left, left Utah, moved to Georgia. Nice climate here. Um, a lot of trucks out here. It's a really good, good place to be in a good market. So, and then just restarted the company under another name. We, we started Power Hungry Performance. Um uh, getting back into the market was a little difficult because it was right uh, right at the end of 2007, beginning of 2008, and the economy was was difficult, and people weren't really spending a lot of money on um, on their trucks at the time. So we ended up approaching it from a market we were doing still doing a lot of F-150 tuning, and we um, we were using the fuel economy aspect of things to try to try to generate sales for tuning and. And, and, and we did very well. We were able to, to survive. You try to start a business in a, in a rough economy is, is crazy, but we were able to survive it and uh, started building our, our 7.3 following again. Um, 
and we were we were selling other manufacturers chips and 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 that was fine but we were running into supply chain issues and stuff and we're like I, I can't do this anymore so we started building our own chip um we came out with the hydro chip um with features that we're lacking in a lot of other manufacturers chips um online delivery you know usb plug-in very very simple delivery method um so we had that uh had that designed we built the whole back-end support system and then and then released it and it is absolutely taken over the 7.3 market for chips it's it's the standard for for 7.3 tuning at this point that's what i've that's what i've heard from a lot of a lot of shops and a lot of truck owners who are interested in getting a little bit more power, a little bit more torque out of their 7.3s. They always mention the hydro chip. I wanted to <clears throat> approach that from, say, the angle of somebody doesn't have a 7.3 yet because we get a lot of listeners where they'll message in and, and they'll say, hey, which truck would you buy? Or if you get a guest on, ask them which truck I should buy. I want right. an older one. And it can go you know, a number of different directions. And I think the question that follows right after that usually is, well, what can I do to get a little bit more power, a little bit more economy? They're not looking to build a race truck or anything like that. They just want a little bit right. more. And I think tuning is where it always starts. Um, so when somebody's looking at a, a 99 to 0373, what, what kind of improvements or what can you give them through tuning that they would, they would notice a difference where they hook up a trailer, or they're just daily driving it versus stock? Right. Well, the, uh, the the nice thing about the Hydro Chip is is with our library of files, you can pick anything from basically stock to 100, 120, 140 horsepower um, power levels. Um, like you said, most of the people that that are looking to to bump the trucks up, they're not looking for anything crazy. They just want a little better fuel economy, a little better, a little better pulling power. So something in the 40, 65, 80 horsepower range suits most most customers. Um, it's very easy on the engine. We've got customers that have run our, our tunes for 500,000 miles and I've never had an issue. Um, it's just, and, it, and it's very simple to install um, the, the selection. If you need to change power levels, the only thing that we really recommend anybody watch is just keep an eye on your exhaust temps, which is, you know, the, the big mitigating factor for power output. Um, other than that, you know, it's you pick your power level and go. One of the uh, things when you mentioned being able to deliver tunes online, I think back to very limited history that I have with some of the chips that were out there. You couldn't do that, so you always had to like take it off, send it in, wait for it to come back. Right. It wasn't very convenient. Yeah, it, it wasn't. That was, and that was, you know, one of the things when we had the chip designed. Um, we really wanted to make it as as user friendly and as as easy to use. Um, uh, file accessibility as as simple as possible. And in the process of doing that, we also made it um, very flexible for other people to do custom tuning for, because you don't have to get the tunes from us. You can call anybody who does custom tuning and they can just email you files and you load them right on onto the chip at your convenience. It's basically open source and we provide the encryption tool to tuners for free. So it's, you know, any tuner, any 7.3 tuner can write tunes for it. That's we very, love that. It's very cool because it, with with what I know of the product, it, it was always like, say on the Duramax or Cummins side, you could have EFI Live or you could have some of these other things and your tuner could email you a file or maybe make a change on the truck. And it's so cool to see these older trucks be able to get some of the technology and some of the advancements that have happened with tuning. And we were chatting a little bit before the podcast about, I had mentioned in the last couple of years, I've been starting to hear a lot more about 7.3 Power Strokes versus what I used to hear. And you guys are right there. That's your core customer. What um, are you guys seeing that as well? Are you seeing people that are wanting to get rid of their newer truck and go back to something that's simpler, um, that's more straightforward to be able to either build or work on or maintain? We're seeing a lot of that. Um, we're seeing a lot of people, you know, people who have driven six O's, six fours, um, or have had a six seven and have run into the fuel pump issues, fuel system issues, you, you know, that Ford will not warranty. And they just get frustrated with the vehicles. And it's like, I never had problems like this when I, when I had a seven three, you know, <laughs> a lot of people are actually dumping the newer trucks and going back to the older ones because they're easy to work on. Um, and they're reliable. They just, they just run good. I mean, they're not huge powerhouses, but they'll pull all day long. So they're, they're just good trucks. How long have we said, surely this will die off? Yeah. I mean, I say, so, I, you know, the, the, the interesting thing, you know, what we're doing with, with the, with our event is it's actually, it's, it's, we're celebrating the 30th anniversary of the power stroke. You know, when you think the seven, three 
power stroke diesel came out in 94 and a half. And here we are in, in 2024, 30 years later, and still people still want these trucks. They're still in high demand. And there, and there are hundreds of companies still making products for these vehicles. It's astounding. Yeah. There's so much interest. It's really been shocking for me in that I think when I, when I first started to get into the industry is about 2010 or 11, but I was an enthusiast before then. And it was always about the latest and greatest. So the right. LV seven came out, Oh, it's a common rail. And then, you know, Cummins does it. And then the six liter four, then the six, four came out and that was great. So for me, it was always, what's the latest engine, but I find myself doing the same thing and looking back and saying, what is the simplest most straightforward truck that I can have that I can enjoy for right. however many hundreds of thousands of miles that, that I want it and not have to worry about some of the, some of the other things. And that's where I had seen, um, the seven, three summit. I wanted to ask about that because I've, I've seen a lot of shop owners talking about it and, and really interested. And I wanted to make sure we talked about this event that you guys have. Right. That's your department. <laughs> so summit seven, three, <clears throat> And you can find information at summit73.com, but it is a collaboration amongst all the uh, manufacturers that, that make things for the 7.3, the reselling, the retail shops, the uh, mechanic shops, installers. the installers, the builders, anyone that works within the 7.3 market, uh, we're, you know, please come out let's let's work together to keep this truck you know amazing so it's it's not <clears throat> there'll be new products that are announced at it there will be um you know people showing what they have for the 73 but ultimately it's just about coming together and learning okay what are the options with the 73 and how can we improve this platform one of one of the really important things is is you know as we're you know, hitting 30 years old on these manufacturer support for products for these, you know, like, like factory support is basically non-existent at this point. I um, mean, you can get gaskets and stuff like that. Um, you know, a few other little things, but almost everything that you get for these vehicles now is aftermarket. There's nothing that's coming from Ford anymore. So it's exceptionally important that we highlight people who are still making products for these vehicles because that's what's going to help continue to keep these vehicles uh keep these on the road um without that support then uh, you know it'll, it'll eventually just die off and we want to make sure that that everybody knows who's making what who's who's got new products coming out um and even you know some of some of the uh, uh the more exciting stuff like billet blocks aluminum heads stuff like that for people who really want to get crazy with the vehicles but just day-to-day -day stuff, you know, is, is still hugely important. I, th I think bringing, bringing that whole segment together is incredibly important because there's so many companies that maybe they focus on the aesthetics or body parts or interior components. And then you have the engines and the transmissions and so many different things that are going on. How does cl collaborating <clears throat> with these companies, where do you see the future of it? going from a truck owner's perspective, they, they just buy one of these trucks. Um, it's going to be a long-term um, commitment that they have for it. How does the collaboration between companies, do you think that's going to progress? What, you know, being able to bring them all together, like in this summit? Well, I, I think the, the one thing is uh, there's probably a lot of companies out there that are making stuff that nobody even knows that they're making stuff. Um, and we want to, one, you know, from a business to business standpoint, you know, for builders, installers and stuff like that, we want to provide them access um, to, to manufacturers that they otherwise would not even have heard of before. Um, so we, we want to be able to provide that. Um, we eventually do want to have, have the event uh, be, be open to the general public so that the end consumer can also, also see what's going on. Um, being that this is our first event with this, we wanted to try to keep it small and keep it organized um, and not get too carried away with it. Um, but it's just, you know, just being able to be aware of who's making new stuff um, and, and share that with, with, with other, other installers and retailers um, will be, will, will be um, integral in keeping the, uh, the platform and the hobby alive. And there, there are companies that are competition with each other, but everyone comes at it from a unique angle. And so um, 
I apologize. That was, it's a windy day here. Uh, everyone comes at it from a different angle. So even though you have this injection or injector manufacturer and this injector manufacturer, they both offer something a little bit different. And that's, I mean, collaboration, that's where we can come together and say, okay, this is best for this set up this, you know, this is what I would recommend for this. And like you said, the small companies that aren't on anyone's radar, what do they have that could really improve the trucks, you know, it, around us that, that we just don't know about? Yeah. I mean, it, it is a competitive industry and there are a lot of people who play in the same areas, but um, it's, it's also a very tight knit industry. The seven, the seven, three community is very tight knit. Everybody knows everybody. And and I think, you know, for the most part, everyone pretty much gets along. Um, we all depend on each other to keep this community going. So um, it, it's, we, we, we've all been, a lot of us have been in this a long time and, and, and we get along with everybody pretty much. It's really exciting because I've had either episodes or listeners message into me and they'll share these really personal stories about maybe they heard somebody do a restoration on one of our episodes and they'll talk about their dad or their grandfather having a 94 power stroke or a 99 yeah. and they're at the different point in their life now where they can afford to have a vehicle they want to restore they just want to take out on the weekends or maybe they, they want to work it really hard but there's that emotional personal connection to that particular body style year range of truck right. and so right. i think being able to give them all these options in the future is is so important. And I haven't seen that. I haven't seen this with like a first gen Cummins or second gen or some of the other diesel models that are out there. So I think you guys are blazing a trail with it to be able to bring companies together and then people that want to, you know, capture that memory or have this truck every day, or they just want something simple that's going to run for hundreds of thousands of miles. They know where to go to get these components to maintain right. their truck. And at the end of the day, there are still, right at a million 7.3 liters registered in the U S today. So there's still a lot of them out there. Um, so there's, you know, a lot of room for, for us, you know, the, the, the people that really love the seven threes, there's a lot of room for growth and, and playing with these amazing, amazing trucks. It's interesting as a seven three is my first, that was my first experience with a diesel truck. Um, I grew up in a Ford family and so being kind of rebellious, I couldn't like Ford. I had to pick another one, you know, to kind of like, but my dad loved them and his dream truck at the time, it was an 0173 that he bought brand new. Okay. And that was the truck that we would go camping in, or he would take hunting or he would drive every day. And it was black immaculate and he would just do you know, smaller things with it, but he loved that truck. And I saw from his passion with it. And then through my time in the diesel industry, Seven three owners are some of the most passionate that I come across of any brand, any engine Absolutely. maker. They love them. And it gets me excited because I, I like that passion. I like to know the stories behind it. I wanted to ask you, Bill, what in particular with seven threes interested you? Was there a personal connection? Was it the first truck? Was it something you just always gravitated towards or where did the interest come from? Um, it goes back to when I was working at super chips. Um, I've, I've been in the automotive industry for a long time. I started out as a mechanic you know, in my teens. And, um, I was, I was a Chevy guy growing up. I had, had a Chevelle, you know, small blocks were, were the thing. Um, much, much to my dad's disappointment because my dad worked for Ford, <laughs> um, and my grandfather. Um, so anyway, uh, when I, when I got hired on at super chips, they sat me in front of a computer and, and taught me how to tune Fords, um, or at least gave me the basics. And I had to kind of figure everything else out myself um wrote uh, you know spent a lot of time on the dyno breaking down ford's strategies you know in their computers but it was a lot of gas stuff i was doing a lot of mustangs and a lot of f-150s f-250s but all gas stuff and then when they started coming in with the seven threes um the thing that that i found absolutely amazing about it was like you know you tune a, a gas vehicle and unless you're putting a supercharger on it or something like that there's a limit to how much power you can make with just tuning. You can change the fuel curves a little bit, change timing curves. You make 10, 15 horsepower and it's great. You know, it, 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 it drives a little better and that's fine. Um, the first time we got a seven, three on the dyno and I started tuning it, we're making like 60, 70 horsepower. I'm like, wow, this is crazy. Cause it's something you can feel. You can put yeah. it on the street and go and it's, and it's just, 
outstanding. You know, so we're, you know, I think we were kind of limited to 65, 70 horsepower on the first OBSs that we did. Um, but that's all the injectors would handle. Um, and then uh, the following year when we got our first Super Duty in on the dyno, we were making 100, 120 horsepower. I was just absolutely floored that this kind of power could be made with just but just simple tuning. Um, and that, that really just sealed it for me. I, 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 I've loved tuning them since then. Um, and, you know, even at that period, you know, we're talking, you know, 98, 99, um, modified injectors weren't a thing yet. Modified turbos weren't a thing yet. We were just working with what we had on the truck and that was it. So, uh, but yeah, it was, it was just the, the immediately identifiable power changes that, that really kind of sucked me into that whole world. It's, it was the same thing for me because I was into gas trucks and you, I remember you'd buy something and you get maybe 20 horsepower out of it. Yeah. And then I had a friend with a diesel and it's like 150 or 120. And I'm like, why am I, <laughs> why do I have this gas vehicle? What am I doing here? <laughs> yeah, open the whole new world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with, yeah. It really um, does open your eyes to everything. And it's like it, it, the, the, uh, you know, the ability to just take something and something so simple and, and you get that kind of power out of it has just always been astounding. Well, and the things you can change through tuning with um, tuning gas vehicles, you're very limited in what you can change. When you look at the tuning for a diesel. It doesn't, have, it doesn't have the same restrictions. <laughs> it's very so. different. <laughs> very yeah. different. There's so many options there. What I'm thinking of somebody who has a, just bought a seven, three and, and maybe they they know a little bit, but they don't, they don't know a whole lot about, all the different parts, all the different upgrades that you can do. And I find they ask questions like, how much power can I add over stock and be safe? I think it's going to come back to EGTs, but I wanted to ask you from your experience, somebody who's new, they're looking for tuning. That's where they want to start. What things should they keep in mind to be able to enjoy that power, enjoy that torque, but also be as safe as possible with the engine? Right. Um, Airflow is key to keeping your exhaust temps down. The more air you can get through the engine, the better. Um, so anything you can get do to get more air in, in front of the turbo um, and anything you can do to get the exhaust out of it. Uh, down pipes um, are, are important for keep, you know, keeping the uh, exhaust unrestricted. Um, intake mods, cold air intakes are real popular. Some of them are better than others. Um, some of them allow you know a little better airflow. But anything you can do to get airflow through the engine is going to keep your EGTs down. Turbo and that, wheels. Um, uh, changing the compressor wheel is is would be like the next step up, so you can actually pump more air into the engine. Um, and then and, and then once you can get the EGTs down, then you can start adding more fuel in and get more power. So it, you know you'll do it in incremental steps. You do a little bit at a time. Um, depending on depending on what your target is you know if you're just looking to you know pick up a little more horsepower for pulling a trailer or you know run around town a nice daily driver you don't have to get crazy with it um and then then you've got people who really like to play and they'll you know they'll put turbos on it compound turbos big injectors i mean you can get get as crazy as, as your wallet will let you so. <laughs> how well does the so horsepower numbers give some horsepower numbers um is it most, mo that. yeah, most of most of the trucks that we see, um, which, like I said, is just a, a lot of people who just you know daily driver kind of stuff. Um, we do. We would normally recommend like uh, if they wanted to get involved in changing injectors, we could look at a stage stage one injector, 160 cc. Um, that a uh, a billet compressor wheel intake and exhaust, and you can see close to 400 horsepower, um, and I wouldn't pull a 10,000 pound trailer at that level, but you can tune it down with the chip, drop the power down and, and, and still be pulling at three, 320 horsepower and, and do it reliably. How well do the transmissions hold up? Let's like, when I think of a four or 100, I kind of think of the aftermarket side of mm -hmm. it, how many parts there are and people that'll even swap those behind other trucks that make right. a ton of power, but thinking just keeping it stock daily driving, towing, are they pretty stout for being able to handle the extra power? The 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 four R one hundred in in general um, is is a good transmission. Um, it's certainly um, could see some benefits to doing a modified valve body, just to help you know keep things a little tighter in the transmission, a little more pressure on the clutches. Um, clutch wear would be probably your biggest concern. Um, so there's there, there's some very inexpensive mods you can do to the transmission. Um, 
then again, if you really wanted to go all out, there's plenty of transmission builders. Uh, Brian's Truck Shop, John Wood, um, they both build fantastic transmission. Um, ATA, I, there's any number of transmission builders out there that'll that'll build a transmission, and it'll hold up pretty much anything you want to put in front of it. I think that's what's really nice about the the platform is just <clears throat> the options for the transmission side. I when I mentioned earlier, I came from a Ford family. I went towards the Cummins side. So in my head, that was like always something you had to build the transmission pretty quick. Like they don't hold up right. to very much. So that that's kind of been a, a theme that uh, I've picked up on across all the Ford models, whether we're talking E4ODs, 4R100s, 5R110, right. 6R140s, all the way to the new ones. They seem to give you a lot of ability to play with power. And I think right. if somebody is looking maybe to get into an older truck, um, that, that's really helpful for being able to know, hey, I can have a little bit more power. I don't need to necessarily mm -hmm. invest in a built transmission um, right away. Something I was curious about is what are some questions customers ask you when they call in and they're looking for you know, tuning or different options with tuning? What are some common things that people ask? Oh, I can, yeah, <laughs> I'll say I can take this one. <laughs> um, what's safe to run on my truck if I, it's fully stock? And the answer to that is all the tunes we write that are, so when you buy the chip, um, it, it leaves us blank. Uh, there are some retailers that will put tunes on it for you. I recommend filling it yourself so you see what the options are, but you have free access to a full library of files. All of those tunes that are in the library are designed for stock trucks. So as long as you use it, the tuning according to you, you know the application, you've got extremely heavy towing, uh, you have a daily driver, you've got extreme, um, all of them are safe if used within, you know, those, within parameters. those parameters. Um, that's a real common question. How much horsepower can I see? Well, it depends on the year. Um, you know, you've got uh, late 99 through, uh, yeah, but so 2003, but 2002 and 2003, you don't want to put quite as much power behind it. So, you know, 140 horsepower is, is the answer to that. You can add about 140 horsepower over stock. Uh, and you'll see those numbers if the truck is running well. Like, <laughs> there's always little things that'll... Other questions um, we get are like, how much fuel economy? Fuel economy is a, a big, big one. one. Uh, how much... How much how much will this save me in fuel? Well, it depends on how you drive. We do have a fuel sipper tune that forces you to drive conservatively. Um, I always recommend the higher horsepower tunes, though, because it takes less effort to get to speed and maintain it. And that's where I always saw the best fuel economy is in like the, the yeah. 140. That was always the hardest part for me because I would do the same thing as load the biggest tune and then think, okay, I'm just going to conservatively drive it. But then the fun <laughs> yeah. factor goes up the more you press into the pedal right. and it's really yeah. hard to kind of. Well, uh, we, we used to always tell people is, you know, uh, once you, once you wear the shiny off of it, you know, wear the new off of it and you get back to driving the way you used to drive your truck, then you'll start seeing some fuel economy gains, but it almost, Without exception, you know, the first month people call back. I, I didn't get any fuel economy. Well, how are you driving it? Well, yeah, yeah I guess you're right. I probably should back off it a little bit. <laughs> and then so. we get a lot of questions. What are the first mods to make? Yeah. And Bill answered those. Yeah, um, In intake, exhaust, you know, billet wheel, or you know, and then you can do, you can get carried away. But you know, those are some very simple mods that that provide immediately um, uh, accessible benefits. The, uh, the the part I was thinking about with with seven threes and like I said my my experience is, is very limited but <clears throat> the people that I've known with them they really focus on longevity and they want a little bit more power but they're not they're not looking to, to do like Cummins things and you know get crazy right. with it or Duramax right. like, that they really value the the longevity of them. What are some higher mileage seven threes that maybe you guys have had or dealers of yours have told you about that have you know, done the tuning. That's one of the biggest questions that, that, uh, we get asked and I really have never had an answer for is, you know, can I put 300,000 miles on my tuned truck or, or what do you guys see with that, that side of it? So, um, the, the one vehicle that we had, we had an excursion that, that we bought with 270,000 miles on it and put, and, and then of course immediately put a set of injectors in it and it was our testing vehicle. It was, it, 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 was, it, was, it was, it was, it was our, 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 play bed um and and we drove that several years without any issue um 
and then turned around and, and, and sold the truck because we just didn't need a big vehicle anymore. All our kids were out of the house and um, we didn't need something that'll hold, you know, eight kids, you know, eight kids and, and garbage. So, um, but I've got customers, honestly, that, that I, that I was dealing with when I was still working at super chips that have had their trucks 25 years and still running tuning that we've done on it have four or 500,000 miles. I've got a few customers that, that I've had since owning power hungry, which uh, we started in 2007 that have, have trucks that have seven, eight, 900,000 miles on it and still running our tuning. They just use their, they're just work trucks and they use them every day or, or, you know, they, they're, they're uh, like hot shot trucks hauling or whatever. Um, there's a, a lot of trucks out there with miles on it. And as long as you do the maintenance on it, these trucks will last a long, long time. I think that's, that's so, that's so important because I think when, when you're new to diesel, you can think that maybe tuning lessens the reliability or you think, oh, if I you know, throw this power at it, it's not going to last as long. But I think with the expertise that you have and the testing and the longevity, right. how long you've been doing it that you can see you can get these extra power levels and you can still have this truck at you know seven eight nine hundred thousand miles however however much somebody drives the truck that's, that's really key i think it goes back to your experience and your expertise with it and now i have an answer when people ask me this question of, of what well, they can do with a tune truck <laughs> and, one of the, and one of the things that that um that people forget you know we, we talk about tuning trucks we talk about the horsepower levels we can achieve at the end of the day it only takes X amount of horsepower to make the truck go down the road. And that's how you're driving the truck. You know, it's using 60, 70, 80 horsepower to go down the road. And that's, and that's it. It's when you need that surge of power or you're, you've got a trailer behind you and you're hitting a grade, you know, four or 5% grade. That's where the power levels really are noticeable. Um, and you're not driving it at that point all the time. So, so you're not, really putting any more wear or any more damage on the truck, um, reducing the longevity of the vehicle or the lifespan, because you're not always driving it with an extra 140 horsepower behind it. You know, it's just, it's just not the reality of it. That's a really good point to bring up because I think sometimes as truck owners, we get caught up on the peak number where right. it's almost a red line on the dyno. This is what it makes, but we're not driving it there. So the power at lower throttle positions or at different speeds it is where we spend most of our time and right. that's where we can notice a huge difference because it's very rare that you're full throttle, you know, in, right. in a truck. Well, unless, unless you drive like me, but <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to, uh, we do have a lot of shop owners that listen and I wanted to go back to the seven, three summit for a second. When, when does it take place? How can people that are in that industry, be able to connect with you guys, ask those questions about the summit. Because as I mentioned before, I've seen a lot of these guys talking about it and saying, hey, are you going? Oh, yeah, I'm definitely interested. I'm I'm going to it. So for um, anyone who's listening that is in the industry and wants to participate or learn more, how can they connect and do that? Sure. So the summit is April 19th and 20th, 2024. Uh, you can go to summit73.com for information. Uh, and we actually have a discount code for your listeners. So um, we're offering 20% off general admission with the discount code TDP20. So be sure to enter that. But it is April 19th and 20th. Uh, it's uh, just north of Atlanta, Georgia. It, uh, it'll, I mean, it's, it's going to be an amazing event. We're really so excited for it. <laughs> you can't tell. <laughs> so excited so um so one of the uh, one of the other things that we're doing with the summit is in relation to custom tuners who uh do custom tuning for the hydro chip uh, a lot of them use our software to do the custom tuning and so on the 18th the day before the actual event we actually have a class that we're holding on uh on the uh on the software on the minotaur software that we use for the for, for tuning the seven threes so um, so if any of the, any of the people who are out there listening and want to, want to get in on the class or have just wanted to understand how the custom tuning works, um, we'll have a class on that on the 18th. Seating is very limited to that though. It's, we have a boardroom that we're in basically. So it is, it's le uh, limited to 25 participants. So if anyone is interested in learning Minotaur software or honing their skills, sign up now. It's it'll fill up really soon. 
I'm really excited about it. It's so, I've never seen anything like this. And, and I really believe in, in what you guys had said about collaborating and the 7-3 community coming together for so many different reasons, whether it's lack of aftermarket or not aftermarket support, but lack of OEM support. Right. with components or just learning more and all these participants being able to go back to their shops, go back to their states. And when they get that seven, three customer being able to connect them, because I think it's just, it's so crucial to bring new people in new people mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, want an older diesel, they get a seven, three, yeah. there's an aftermarket that supports them now. And it seems like it, it's progressing. It's, it's really kind of shocked me a little bit is how the older trucks are, are progressing almost alongside the newer ones with technology, so many different components, so many different companies involved. It's really exciting. Right. It's, it's, it's been interesting because like I said, you know, I've been in the industry long enough. I've seen the shift of the demographics of people who are buying these trucks. And when, you know, back in the late nineties, early two thousands, it was, it was, you know, guys in their thirties and their forties, they're buying trucks, you know, for, for work or just, you know, have a nice truck to drive around and they've moved on to, to different vehicles and we're seeing a much younger demographic come into it. These trucks are considerably more affordable than anything new. And you can, so you can, you can buy them reasonably cheap. The mark the, the market over the last couple of years has been a little weird and we'll see if that corrects, but, <laughs> um, but you can still get them reasonably cheap. And, and there's a, just a wealth of parts and, and technology out there to make the trucks, um, easy to work on and, and, and you can build something nice and still be thousands and thousands of dollars less expensive than even a, a newer truck that's a couple of years old. That, that's one of the things with power, like we talked about earlier with tuning and what you can get out of a diesel truck. The, you can have an older truck that makes close to, if not more than what a brand new one does, but you have so many benefits with simplicity. Uh, fuel economy um there's, there's just so many so many parts of it where to me an older truck appeals to me more than a newer one i love the i love, I love what the new ones have in them i love the technology but really for me it comes down to durability reliability and longevity right and that's where these older trucks appeal to me so i love seeing things um you know like this and, and hearing about the 7-3 summit and the approach that you guys take with it is keeping the infusion of expertise and advancements that are out there and giving that to a whole year range of trucks, which like you mentioned, Angela, there's a ton of them that are still registered or still on the road. They're not going anywhere. And we can keep that market, keep that market going for them. And there's a lot of brilliant minds in the industry that are coming up with very creative ways of uh, improving, improving this platform. It's pretty cool. Yeah, we've got, uh, you know, some of the some of the manufacturers who, that we work with that we've been talking to that are coming up with with some new innovative stuff that really hasn't been on the market yet to help just keep these things going. Um, you know, different turbo kits and stuff and um, uh, different, you know, injector configurations. There's there's just a, a lot of really good stuff coming up Uh that we may actually see some stuff being released at the event. So we'll, you know, yeah, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> we're working with, uh, we have full force diesel and KC turbos that are um, our huge sponsors for this event. And I know for a fact, KC turbos is announcing a new product at the event. So oh, that's very cool. And there's other, there's other companies that have said as much as well. So they're, they're kind of holding off and they're going to make it the big announcement at summit seven, three. Very cool. I, I, I'm sure there's a question that I didn't ask you guys either about tuning or about seven threes or about how to change my tunes or, or how to update it. Something I, I forgot to ask you, how can someone who's listening connect with you guys, be able to ask you or your team questions about tuning or, or any of the products that you offer, um, you know, for their, for their truck, is it best to call or, or jump on the website or go on to social media? Let me take it. Okay. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> My wheelhouse. Uh, so feel free to call 678-890-1110. Uh, we actually pick up the phone. You will reach a person. Uh, if you do get to voicemail, that means we're on the phone and we'll call you right back. Um, uh, gopowerhungry.com is our website. You can uh, get support at support at phptune. So phptune.com. Uh, that's support for, you know, just general. We have Summit 7.3 
at phptune.com if you have specific questions about the event. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Um, yeah, and you just look for Power Hungry Performance. And, and we're pretty active on, on all of those. Very cool. It was awesome to learn more about the company. I've heard about you guys for years. We've had um, some of the guys who have 7.3 race trucks, I know, use your product. And to be able to chat with you and hear the history and, and the focus that you guys have is really cool. And I, I am definitely excited about the 7.3 Summit. I think it's something huge, not just for 7.3s, but I think across the diesel industry. And you guys are the first ones that I've heard putting something like this together and it's it's so needed for i think the future of yeah. of trucks that can be purchased the future of the aftermarket so i'm really excited to see how it goes and i appreciate you guys' time today you know chatting with me about it and now i, I know a little bit more about seven threes that can answer some questions some listeners message me in with <laughs> exactly exactly well you know we, you know one of the things that we've always um really tried to strive for is being able to educate customers and you know, people who are interested in, in the market um, and, and give them a better understanding of what it is um, you know, that we can do for them, what, what, our, what our vendors and other manufacturers can do for them and just let them know what their options are. Cause um, we're, I'm, I'm a big Ford fanatic. Um, I love the seven three and I would love to see, I'd love to see it last forever. And, you know, I mean, there's, there's, there's a reality to everything, but you know, we're going to, we're going to really try to keep this, this, this hobby in this market alive as long as we can. And, you know, anything that we can do to help promote it and, and help bring people together to, to celebrate, you know, this, this platform, you know, we're going to, we're going to be part of. Well, I definitely appreciate uh, you guys' time today and, and chatting with us. I look forward to doing it again, seeing how the, the summit goes. Maybe ask some specific 7-3 tuning questions. Maybe some of our listeners have on a, on a future episode. So it was really cool to chat with you. Thank you so much, Patrick. Thank we really you, appreciate Patrick. it. Really quite the experience. We appreciate it. Don't forget, Diesel fans, make sure and head on over to Kershaw.kaiusa.com. Use code 2024DIESEL40 for 40% off MSRP. It's a great way to save some money and get some really cool gear. If you need a knife for hunting, fishing, EDC, something around the job site, around the house, they've got a whole bunch of choices for blade steel, blade shape, different opening mechanisms, different handle designs, and knives to really meet any budget that you might have. So definitely make sure, head on over, check them out, use that code to save some money and get some cool gear. Also want to give a shout out to some of our Patreon supporters, Tyler Lowen at 23 Diesel, John, J. Cole, all of our other Patreon supporters, all of you who subscribe on YouTube podcast apps, follow us on social media. We appreciate all your support here in your eight of the Diesel podcast and look forward to bringing you more of the content that you guys want to hear in 2024. Until next time, keep the shiny side up.